everybody welcome back to my channel my name is sabrina and today we're continuing on with beacon pines so we need to follow bex here's my new friend i was just telling you about just hit it off this pineapple my new little friend's name eyes with luca the look on her face was equal parts expectant and desperate. Well, Luca Van Horn, nice to meet you. Nelly and this is Eloni. We're Beck's parents. Beck gave Luca a quick nudge. Yeah, Beck's told me all about you for years. You both stopped obsessing with me making friends. Sorry, we doubted you. Your children have fewer than five close friends. Probably stunted development that doubles. One down, four to go. Well, Nelly, easy as possible. You can relax. My friend has been friended. Call for a celebration. Luke needs must join us for dinner tonight. Dinner? Oh, another coincidence. I already asked him, and he said he would love to. It's just wonderful. In that case... Uh... We have to... <laughs> Thanks a ton. You're welcome. I owe you one. My moms are great, but I, that's why I suspected... And I think it's awesome. Uh, but they can be a little bit much sometimes. The house is a little cottageness to the big mansion place. What, you live in the, on the Valentine estate? Well, that's the spot. Meet you in the big creepy gate. Don't be late. I'm back, or I'm back to square one with a whole friend grift. Great, see you soon. Uh, okay. Hello. Good morning, Jeff. Uh, it's about further down tubes. If you ask me, come on, it's not all bad. Festival's coming up at the festival. Old Man Valentine put the cockamamie shindigs all the time. Okay. We're doing a whole town. As far as I can see, the difference between Old Valentine's company and the new perennial harvest Jeff dug his outfit. His pockets for a bit. Difference between an empty soup can and a brown banana. Both of them are garbage. Exactly. Okay. Met her at the big creepy. Eris, Gus, and Valentine's who grew up. Solomon who moved a few years back. That sounds like the one. <laughs> Just three people live in the huge thing. Bunch of shady stuff happening in the place all like the time. Excuse me. Yeah, but not all of them. He pretty much keeps it themselves. They're boring, pretty much. What a waste. Mom says it used to be busier back in the day, but before the foul harvest. It was like the fifth one, something to mention the foul harvest thing, and you all have the same ominous tone. Even you're going to explain them how the harvest got all foul, but we kept can't keep my parents waiting anymore. Most kids just ditch me at this point. Why are you still here? Well, you look like you could use some help. You know what, Luca? You're not so bad. You've been through this as simple as possible. Just eat, smile, and nod. Fun. Great. Whatever you do, don't bring up their work. I think I can Back handle to the that. Long breath. Finn gave a firm nod. Here goes. Oh, sorry. Here goes nothing. Chapter Four: Dinner with the Moodwills. Ilona Moodwill was worried about change. A gardener at heart, she understood the necessity of change, relied on it even. Mm -hmm. But there was a difference between the controlled world of her plants and this cluttered cottage in a strange town. Almost done. Nelly Why does she keep moving activity, then? Digging through boxes. Sorry, love. Couldn't find the dishes. We'll have to make do with paper plates. Dinner went by without much conversation. As she watched Beck and Luca finish up their pizza, Ilona let herself relax into the chair. The things she cared about were still here. Yeah. Nellie finally had the job of her dreams. Beck was beginning to take root. Ilona's task was simply to tend to them. She could do that. Yes, you can. Tell us a bit about yourself. Where do you live? Oh, I live with my grandma over on the other side of the river. 
Or your parents, Beck Manners. It's all right. My, bad, my dad passed away in the accident with the fertilizer plant six years ago, uh, six years back. And my mom's been missing for a few months now. Like missing, Lucas missing? were fixed to his plate, pushing a chunk of pineapple around with his finger. Nellie was the one who eventually broke the silence. Luca, how did you like the pizza? Very good. Normally we put more Ilona effort into nervously pizza. nervously gestured toward the box set. Fully settled. He said his mom is missing. Beck. I'm sorry, Luca. This move has all of us a little tired. Luca wiped his face with his sleeve. No, it's fine. <sighs> so, Beck said just you moved here for Luca work? Beck swift kick under the table. I mean, what brought you to Beacons? You're right here the first time. We're here for work. Nellie won't let tell you about this, but she's a brilliant chemist. I don't know about brilliant, but I, I do love it. She's brilliant. Perennial Harvest just made her the newest lead research <gasps> of deep engineering. <gasps> I'm glad we changed timelines. She's dead in the other one. So impressive than it really is. I'm just happy I get to make a difference in the world. Okay. Luca glanced over to Beck. She seemed to be holding her breath. No, I mean different ways plant grows. I talk to people and plants and hope for the best. And with their job and allow loved ones to pursue their dreams. Beck slammed her fist into the table, perhaps harder than she intended. Hey Luca, how about some dessert? Actually, I have to meet my friend Rolo Luca soon. outside to gauge the time. The sky was darker than he expected, filled with ominous clouds. The storm's brewing. I should get going. But yeah, almanacs aren't the aren't the useful Luca wiped around his here. Mouth one last time with his napkin and started to get up. Thank you for the pizza. It was really good. I'll see you at the festival, Beck. Wait up. I'll walk you home. Surprised, Luca turned around. He knew Rolo could be prickly around new people. But Beck seemed cool. Rolo would warm up to her eventually, probably. The sky answered. Clouds began to rumble. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to rumble with ominous thunder. Luca surveyed the roiling clouds. It's the, uh, I say the odds are good. Maybe you should stay here. I'll make a break At for it. At that moment, the heavens opened up, unleashing torrential rain. Try to recalculate those odds. Much to do up here. I have to poke around, be my guess. Luca squinted into the eye hole of the microscope. Gum. Luca adjusted the slide with his fingers to get okay. a better look. Gum increasing the chewing. Chewed that one for Luca 47 days. On his sweater and gave a nervous laugh. Beck looked down, timidly tapping the ladder with her feet. A little, but weird can be cool. Just like this in our treehouse. Carried away sometimes. She does have time for me. She showers me with high tech overcompensation. The the one of the Believe the stuff you could pick up back in the city. Now it's all form reports and static. Luca bent down to examine the bouquet of wilting flowers. Judging by the odor, they were well past their prime. Yeah. Pungent. He flipped open the attached card. Happy trails. 
Well, you weren't looking around, huh? Sorry. This is our old school. They really feel good about themselves when they do both. Yeah, it's brilliant. Parents, better job somewhere else. Put them in water, sort of thing. I do to care. Luca, can I ask you something? Of course. Dang, didn't that hurt? No, it's a cat. To be honest, it hurt more when I, than I expected. Beck took a moment to watch the rivulets of water running down the window. Okay. Do you ever feel alone, like, even when people are around you? Yes. Serious. Do you ever feel like your family doesn't care about what you want? Uh, it didn't used to feel that way. I know Gran loves me, but sometimes when she looks at me, it's like she's looking at Luca a problem. Took a deep breath, exhaling slowly. I know the feeling. How do you deal with it? Have Rolo? I guess I haven't yet. Ah, uh, but one thing my dad told me when I was little. Don't hold grudges, especially against yourself. Even if you try uh, and to hold it all in, you're gonna pop. And never got to that point. Something I have to figure out on my own, though. I've got to do something, anything. Here. What are you doing? I don't know. Something. We've we got to register our complaints with the storm. Listen here, you miserable universe. Stop jerking me around. I want to go back. I think we're tell them it's going to be all right. Luca Nothing's going to change. A scream that echoed into the night. Let me try. <laughs> Be a normal kid. And straightened up. There. Let me close it back. As Feel better? As began, the storm abated. Thanks indeed. Me too. Sure, I'll walk you out. Okay. Sounds good. Luca, don't let the universe jerk Mech, you around. Luca, a light thump on the arm before heading in. Okay. Now we have to head back. Chapter 5 friendly feud the air was heavy with a hard rains residue the smell of wet things despite his dreary surroundings luca felt at peace he'd okay. never shared those details about his dad with anyone not even rollo but it's not like this changed anything no nope. was still his best friend adding yes. back to the group would help balance things out everything's better in threes this is what luca told himself as he headed to the treehouse Hey, Dawn. You bet. Turns out that the Sharpener Valentine died. He left behind a particularly last will and testament. This kid didn't just give it. There were conditions. Eris had to take on a child as her ward. A kid our age. She showed me how we. Oh, excuse me. So, bingo. She would have lost everything. Rumor is the old sharper sowed some wild oats. <clears throat> yeah. Poor Solomon. Uh, find out. Okay. Sure. Never reveal your sources. We're running before it starts raining. Just locking up for the night, sir. Oh, wonderful. I can only assume this means that festival preparations are completed ahead of schedule. I'm not exactly sure. Storm set us back a bit, but it's getting done late as well. You all decided? Yes, sir. I'm aware involved deciding things. Just because we create a better future. Yes, sir. Very much, sir. No. I'm give up because of the little rainstorm. We got all got. Of course not, sir. But then it's decided. Yes, we'll work until the task is done, sir. Our harvest waits. 
suspicious. Luca had only ever heard him speak in this stiff yet gentle tone a few times, and it always meant one thing. Rollo scoffed. Rain, help me up, liar. You weren't even home. What? I made it to your house and you weren't there. I'm not a fool. After dinner, Luca at Bex. stumbled on his words, Saw. knowing he'd said too much. She's a new kid in town. She's actually kind of cool. You'd like her. She need help convincing her parents that she made a new friend. Not like that, Rolo. You know. Ah! Luca became instinctively angry in response. Both boys were now shouting across the distance. Yes, you did. But it was too late. <laughs> Luca dug through his old stuff. Yes. Not even sure what he was looking for. bad friend come on for all the things I'm gonna oh, fast with him he can just shove it I guess I'm never supposed to make new friends we <laughs> cooed gently from the hallway. Leave the oatmeal by the door. Okay. Sure. Luca just wanted to be alone. Aww. He waited to hear the sound of the front door closing. Done with the anger. Luca dozed off again. I told him you weren't feeling well. Good. Pretty much. Pity party. Luca still couldn't bring himself to go out. Besides, if he ran into Rolo, he'd have to actually confront the situation. Oh.
Yes. The Adventures of Hank Atomic. Ooh, The Adventures of Hank Atomic. Luca carefully opened the cover and began to read. Rolo had received it for his birthday, a special hardcover edition with behind the scenes commentary and bonus art. Rolo cherished it, but asked that Luca keep it at his house. Luca wasn't sure if it was because Rolo didn't trust himself with it, didn't trust his sister around it, or just wanted an excuse to come hang out at Luca's more often. Whatever the reason, Luca didn't mind, but it had stayed right there where Rolo had stashed it ever since. Now, at the foot of his bed, Luca lost himself in the pages. He'd read it all before, but at this moment, it somehow felt sentimental. Aww. He was well into issue number five when he heard soft footsteps from the hallway. She seems nice, yeah. You had a fight with Rolo, didn't you? Can I come in? Maybe later. All right, then. I'll leave dinner on the kitchen table. Without realizing it, Luca had pouted away the entire afternoon. He once again felt the weight of it all and allowed his weary eyes to close. Luca Back. stood in a vast Ooh. black expanse. Okay. He looked up at his father standing beside him. Walt was working a straw at the bottom of a fountain glass, trying to collect the last bits of milkshake. Dad? Where are we? Taking a final loud gurgling sip, his father peered up from the glass. He jangled the straw playfully with a warm smile, then lifted the empty glass as if to point into the darkness. The source. Uh huh. The Luca's source. Eyes followed his father's gesture. In an instant, he was sitting in front of a blazing campfire. Across from him sat a large figure in a yellow hazmat suit. The figure's voice was a scratchy echo. Mm -hmm. Well, if it isn't the man of the hour, make yourself comfortable. Luca held his shivering hands over the flame to warm himself. It doesn't work that way here. Their yellow-gloved hand pointed to the base of the flame. It's a cold flame. Uh. See? Luca peered at the base of the fire. It wasn't wood that was burning. It was Beacon Pines itself. Tiny buildings, freezing and crumbling as they were consumed oh, no. by flame. Luca could see small shadows moving in the burning city. People. We must save the city. Luca leapt to his feet. We've got to help them. The figure gave a dismissive wave of their hand. Why waste energy helping people who can't even help themselves? The figure bent down to examine the panicked crowd as they desperately tried to stop the flames. They only care about what's right in front of them, not like us. Luca's voice was a trembling what? whisper. Us? The figure slowly stood up, grabbing its helmet with both hands with a jolt and a twist. The suit emitted a gasp. A cloud of mom? mist escaped. Slowly revealing the face within. Luca's own face looked back at him. Older. Worn. Distant. The sensation was oddly familiar. Huh? As if he'd caught his own reflection by surprise in the mirror. The doppelganger smiled. I tried to help once. He gestured towards his face. And all it got me was this. Luca staggered back. Huh? You aren't me. Luca felt a hand catch his shoulder. His father was there again, beside him. Every choice sets us on a path. Yes. This, this is, is literally the point of the game. Of your paths, son. Luca watched his older self shake its head ruefully, its face twisting into a cruel grin. Welp, Dad. If you wanted him to see this, far be it from me to disappoint. Luca watched in shock as the mm -hmm. figure took a confident step forward, and in a flash of cold light, he was gone. What does all of this mean? Luca felt a reassuring squeeze on his shoulder. Just remember why we choose matters just as much as what we choose. Luca woke okay. up to see a hazy figure at the foot of his bed, silhouetted in the morning sun. His grandma. Luca rubbed his eyes. The kind, concerned face of his gran came into focus. She looks like um a Romanian babushka. I don't know if that's actually like what uh she was based off of, but that's what she reminds me of. Grand silenced Luca with a gentle pat on the leg. Yes. No, 
was just mad. No. Okay, accept. We got another charm. Luca gave a reluctant nod. I agree. Buy him a corn dog and apologize. What did I just say? Buy him a corn dog. That's a good boy. Okay. After lunch. Okay. Love you too. Luca took a deep breath. Awesome. Oh, there's a story. Chapter six. Through thick and thin. Despite ah. Luca's bitterness, Gran was right. We'll finish this. He needed to hash things out with Rolo. A big fight changes the nature of a friendship. Whether, in the end, it is for the better or for the worse, all comes down to understanding. If one is not careful, the same familiarity that builds the strongest of bonds can become the wrecking ball that shatters them. Yes. Luca emerged from seclusion, taking in the crisp festival air. But awesome. the events of the day weren't on his mind. He had to find Rolo. Sounds good. We will find Rolo. But I'm going to leave that here for this episode. If you're not already, feel free to subscribe to this channel. And in the next episode, let's see what how this continues. I'm really enjoying the game and the gameplay. Even though it's like it's not difficult. It's just really a pick your own adventure type storyline. But I think it's really fun. Have a great day. And thanks so much for watching. Bye.